<laughs> hey. <laughs> um, what's up? How you doing? Yeah, um... It's been a little while. It's been 84 years. So just a little while. <laughs> what's up, guys? Welcome back to Club Barefoot. You know, you know the deal. Go ahead and take your shoes off. I know, I know. It's been a little bit of a while. Just a little bit. It's been like two months. That's not that big of a deal. But, you know, like if you follow me on Twitch, you'll know that I stream like every week, like four times a week on twitch you know you can get lots of content there but i'm back now so that's all that really matters right now is that i'm back so how you been you know how are the kids or not the kids how's the parent or not the parents how's the dog the cat gerbil do you got a pet i don't want to say that i'm gonna be uploading consistently a lot but i'm going to be here and be doing as much as i can here so, you know, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Um, go ahead and click a thumbs up on this video. Do you the little bell icon ding-a-ling thing so that you know when I drop a video. Surprise, because there's surprises around here. Today, we're going to be playing a game and it's called the Stanley Periable, I think. <laughs> All right, yeah. So we are playing this game called The Stanley Pariable, and it is by Galactic Cafe. So let's get into it. Don't know too much about this game, but let's get into it, yeah. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Just a number. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on the keyboard. Okay. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk. Look at how he's high. To push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day, every month, of every year. Yeah, no. Others might have considered it soul ending. Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. This was that one dude in the movie Soul. Was this the result? <laughs> and then one day, something very peculiar happened. Uh -huh. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. A periable happened. He'd been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No oh. one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened. This complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. This but means it's he time to, to go home. Regained his senses. He got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. Okay. All right, well, Stanley moved kind of fast. Okay, we can't open this door. Poor Tuna Handa, my birthday. All of his co workers were gone. Oh. What could it mean? What, what, why Stanley did my door close? To go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Yeah, I don't think you no missed a memo. How hard Stanley looked. He couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. Okay. I guess let's go to that meeting room you were talking about. No, oh, whoever was here and left, they sure left in a hurry. They didn't do their papers all over the place and very peculiar. Peculiar indeed. When Stanley came to a set oh. of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. I mean, <laughs> do I have to go to the left? What, what happens on the right? This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Wow! Well. Uh, yes, truly a room worth admiring. It had really been worth the detour after all, just to spend a few moments here in this immaculate, beautifully constructed room. 
Why are the doors Damn closing is behind me? Here, drinking it all in. Uh, okay. Why are the doors closing behind me, narrator? Why can't I go back? Yes. Really, really worth it being here in the room. A room so utterly captivating that even though all your co-workers have mysteriously vanished, here you sit looking at these chairs and some paintings. Really worth it. Uh, you know, you sound a little sarcastic right now. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. Why are you telling me what to do? It's dark in this room. Oh no, I don't like that. Is this a horror game? And so he detoured through the maintenance section, walked straight ahead to the opposite door, and got back on track. Am I supposed to be following what you're telling me to do? Cause I don't like it. Yet there was not a single person here either. Can we go home now? Of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. <laughs> I'm getting the heebie-jeebies right now. Is something about to happen to us? Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Sure, you know what? Let's just do what you say, because I don't want to upset you. Okay. The boss is not here. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this. What dark secret was being held from him? What he could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded the terrible truth that his boss had been keeping from him. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number. 2845. But of course, yet incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck. Amazing. He stepped into the newly opened passageway. But I can hear you. Like you're telling me everything. Like. Like you're telling me everything to do here. Like. Uh, oh. Yo, I have the heebie jeebies like crazy right now. Running deeper into the building, Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. It was a stirring of emotion in his chest, as though he felt more free to think for himself, to question the nature of his job. Why did he feel this now, when for years it had never occurred to him? This question would not go unanswered for long. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. What? Wait, 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 wait. Um. Yeah, I'm going to escape. Although this passageway had the word escape written on it, the truth was that at the end of this hall, Stanley would meet his violent death. Ooh. Ooh. Whoa. Excuse me? The door behind him was not shut. Stanley still had every opportunity to turn around and get back on track. <laughs> Am I being mind controlled right now? Are we, uh, yo, I, I really can't make this decision. Are we actually going to die? Or is the narrator just trying to make us think we're going to die? I don't even know which way was escape now and which way was back. But I'm not going to the mind control facility. I'm going to escape. At this point, Stanley was making a conscious, concerted effort to walk forward and willingly confront his death. Sure, whatever, buddy. I'll die, I guess. Did we die? As 
the machine whirred into motion, and Stanley was inched closer and closer to his demise, he reflected that his life had been of no consequence whatsoever. Stanley can't see the bigger picture. He doesn't know who he was. Oh, oh, we're about to die for real! Perhaps his death was a complete loss by cutting the eyeballs from the blind man. No, no! willingly accepted this violent end to his brief and shadow life. We're about to get crashed! Farewell, Stanley, cried the narrator, as Stanley was led helplessly into the enormous metal jaws. In a single visceral instant, Stanley was obliterated as the machine crushed every bone in his body, but, killing him instantly. But I'm still alive. <gasps> we didn't die. And yet it would be just a few minutes before Stanley would restart the game back in his office as alive as ever. What exactly did the narrator think he was going to accomplish? When every path you can walk has been created for you long in advance, death becomes meaningless, making life the same. Do you see now? Do you see that oh. Stanley was already dead from the moment he hit start? Narrator lady, you just blew my freaking brains out just now. Are we all just dead inside? Going through life day by day, night by night. Falling victim to this parable. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? Stanley's computer. Nature painting. The office. That doesn't open. The game is over? Ain't no way. 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 Ain't no way the game is over right now. 3, 12, 10, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, one bing bong imagine like just imagine like you die for real like and this is this is heaven you end up here in a freaking museum of your sad pathetic life what's this we found something <laughs> oh look at these two how they wish to destroy one another how they wish to control one another how they both wish to be free can you see? Can you see how much they need one another? No, perhaps not. Sometimes these things cannot be seen. But listen to me. You can still save these two. You can stop the program before they both fail. Push escape and press quit. There's no other way to beat this game. As long as you move forward, you'll be walking someone else's path. Stop now, that will be your only true choice. Whatever you do, choose it. Don't let time choose for you. Uh, what? <laughs> what did I do? We're gonna die. Fuck it. Don't let time Is the game over? co-workers were gone what could it mean stanley decided to go to the meeting room perhaps he had simply missed a memo we're doing this again you know what let's go to the mind control machine i worked at disney world i know brainwashing when i see it stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office what's downstairs what that is what's in there you know what? You know what? Let's just... No, what's down there? What's down there? I gotta know. I got to know. But Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss, admitting he had left his post during work hours. He might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished. His boss would think he was crazy. 
And then something mm -hmm. occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. All of my co-workers blinking mysteriously out of existence in a single moment for no reason at all? None of it made any logical sense. And as Stanley pondered this, he began to make other strange observations. For example, why couldn't he see his feet when he looked down? Why did doors close automatically behind him wherever he went? And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Were they simply repeating? No, Stanley said to himself, this is all too strange, this can't be real. And at last, he came to the conclusion that had been on the tip of his tongue. He just hadn't found the words for it. I'm dreaming, he yelled. This is all a dream. Oh, what a relief Stanley felt to have finally found an answer, an explanation. His co-workers weren't actually gone. He wasn't going to lose his job. He wasn't crazy after all. I, you're making himself, me feel I crazy. I'll wake up soon. I'll have to go back to my boring real-life job pushing buttons. I may as well enjoy this while I'm still lucid. So, he imagined himself flying and began to gently float above the ground. What? Then he imagined himself soaring through space on a magical star field, and it too appeared. It was so much fun, and Stanley marveled that he had still not woken up. How was he remaining so lucid? And then perhaps the strangest question of them all entered Stanley's head. One he was amazed he hadn't asked himself sooner. Why is there a voice in my head dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? Now the voice was describing itself being considered by Stanley, who found it particularly strange. I'm dreaming about a voice describing me, thinking about how it's describing my thoughts, he thought. And while he thought it all very odd, and wondered if this voice spoke to all people in their dreams, the truth was that, of course, this was not a dream. How could it be? Was Stanley simply deceiving himself, believing that if he's asleep, he doesn't have to take responsibility for himself? Stanley is as awake right now as he's ever been in his life. Now, hearing the voice speak these words was quite a shock to Stanley. After all, he knew for certain, beyond a doubt, that this was, in fact, a dream. Did the voice not see him float and make the magical stars just a moment ago? How else would the voice explain all that? At, at, this voice was a part of himself, too. Surely, surely, if he could just... He would prove it. He would prove that he was in control, that this was a dream. So he closed his eyes gently, and he invited himself to wake up. Oh. He felt the cool weight of the blanket on his skin, the press of the mattress on his back, the fresh air of a world outside this one. Let me wake up, he thought to himself. I'm through with this dream. I wish it to be over. Let me go back to my job. Let me continue pushing the buttons. Please, it's all I want. I want my apartment and my wife and my job. All I, I want have a wife? my life exactly the way it's always been. My life is normal. I am normal. Everything will be fine. I am okay. I don't I don't think we're okay. I'm not gonna lie. I don't I don't Stanley began screaming. Please, someone wake me up. My name is Stanley. I have a boss, I have an office, I am real. Please, just someone tell me I am real. I must be real, I must be. Can anyone hear my voice? Who am I, who am I? And everything went black. This is the story of a woman named Mariella. Oh? Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She arose, got dressed, gathered her belongings, and walked to her place of work. But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. And although she would soon turn to go call for an ambulance, for just a few brief moments, she considered the strange man. He was obviously crazy, this much she knew. Everyone knows what crazy people look like. 
And in that moment, she thought to herself how lucky she was to be normal here. A crazy By dead man made her feel her good. She had no time for this. So it was only a moment that she stood there, staring down at the body. Wait, 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 wait. What just happened? Oh my gosh. We're dead? Yo, I'm not gonna lie. I wasn't saying nothing because walking through them rooms was making me feel like I was going crazy. And I'm just like, I'm sitting here like, yo, in my head, like, Tasha, you sitting at your computer. You're, you're not really a part of this. And I'm like, am I? Am I? I no. no, no. You know what? All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? I don't like this Daniel narrator. Decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. We're going to go to, to the mind control room. What could its purpose be? In fact, this keypad guarded the terrible secret that lay buried below his feet. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number. 28. Stanley was in such a rush to get through the story as quickly as possible, he didn't even have a single minute to just let the narrator talk. Shut up! That kind of anxiety isn't healthy. So he relaxed for a few moments with some calming new age music. What the? Open the damn, open the, open the door, open the door. I'm, t I'm tired of this. What's in the freaking mind control room? Feeling soothed and rejuvenated, Stanley calmly walked forward into the opened passageway. I don't like the narrator. The narrator makes me feel crazy. Am I crazy? I'm not crazy. Stanley's crazy. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? What? Uh, am I about to be what was his name from X-Men? Strength to find out. I want to be I want to be what's the name from X-Men and control everybody. What was his name again? Morpheus? That's not Morpheus. Professor or something. Dr. X? Professor X? X-rated? Now the monsters oh. jumped to life. Their true nature revealed. Each bore the number of an employee in the building. Stanley's oh. co-workers. The lives of so many individuals. Oh my God. Images on a screen. And Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. What is this? Boop. This mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe. It couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? Were we happy? No. He refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never. It was unthinkable, wasn't it? Was it even possible? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? Narrator. Okay, so the, for this portion of the game, the narrator goes on this long-winded speech about how he's telling us about this mind control machine and what we're gonna do next. You know, his typical spiel. But we're gonna skip through all of that because I'm tired of his talking, okay? And we're gonna do what we wanna do. We're taking over now. And for all. I don't like how you be telling me what to do, narrator, wherever you are. Mind controlling. No, no, you're not gonna tell me what to do. I'm gonna do what I want. Continue. Oh, Stanley, you didn't just activate the controls, did you? After they kept you enslaved all these years, you go and you try to take control of the machine for yourself. Is that what you wanted? Yes. Control? I want to control you. Stanley, I applaud your effort. I really do. But you need to understand there's only so much that machine can do. 
You were supposed to let it go. Turn no. the controls off and leave. If you want to throw my story off track, you're going to have to do much better than that. I'm afraid you don't have nearly the power you think you do. For example, and I believe you'll find this pertinent, Stanley suddenly realized he had just initiated the network's emergency detonation system. We were In the event that this machine is activated without proper DNA identification, nuclear detonators are set to explode, eliminating the entire complex. Wait, 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 what? How long until detonation then? Mm, let's say um, two minutes. Ah, now this is making things a little more fun, isn't it, Stanley? It's your time to shine. Wait. You are the star. It's your story now. Shape it to your heart's desires. Oh, this is much better than what I had in mind. What a shame we have so little time left to enjoy it. it, it mere You're a psycho! The bomb goes off. But what precious moments each one of them is. More time to talk about you, about me, where we're going, what all this means. I barely know where to start. I want to get out of here. Let me out. Has been rather amusing watching you try to make sense of everything and take back turn it off turn it off turn it off from you it's quite rich turn it off to see it go but i'm sure whatever i come up with on the next no round will be even better my goodness i don't want to do this anymore four seconds left but i'm enjoying this so much you yeah. what to hell with it i'm going to put some extra time on the clock oh you Sicko. <laughs> Stanley. Please. You're in for quite a disappointment. I don't want to be Stanley spoiled. anymore. That timer isn't a catalyst to keep the action moving along. It's just seconds ticking away to your death. You're only still playing instead of watching a cutscene because I want to watch you for every moment that you're powerless. To see you made humble. <laughs> You know what? I'm just gonna stand here. It's a tragedy. I don't care. You wanted to control this world. Kill me. Fine. But I'm going to destroy it first. Destroy so it. You can't. Take a look at Go the ahead. Clock, Stanley. That's 30 seconds you have left to struggle. 30 seconds until a big boom and then nothing. Blow it up. <laughs> Blow everybody up. Where's the goddamn button? Where's the goddamn button? Into your frail life. Or will you let it go peacefully? Another choice. Make it count. Or don't. It's all the same to me. All a part of the joke. And believe me, I will be laughing at every second of your inevitable life from the moment we fade in until the moment I say, happily ever up. Is there a way to get out of here? Is there a way to beat the narrator? Or do we just continue playing his sick game? A soft wind blew outside and perhaps rain started. And if it did, it stopped shortly after. This Stanley is different. That he would one day see weather. This is different. He's not saying the same thing. So despite my stubbornness of wanting to go back and forth with this narrator until I finally beat the game, it did not change. We went down the same path again, took the door to the left and tried to turn off the switch and it happened again. We died. I think you just die over and over in this game. I think the only way to beat this game is to turn it off. So that's what I have done. I turned it off. No, but seriously though, I hope you guys enjoy this series. Uh, I, I might want to get back into the game just to see how many endings we can get because I feel like there's tons of endings, tons of passageways. I really, really, you know, I want to beat this narrator's tushy, okay? I do. I really do want to beat it. But yeah, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Go ahead and hit the little bell icon so you know when I post a video and hit a thumbs up if you like the video i appreciate you guys see you next time bing bong fuck you like